So, hello and welcome to another video. Um, this is another one about the RX570. And you can see the VRAM is now completely populated on this card. And um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. So, if you missed the first videos about this, this card does have a very, very underpowered VRAM. So much so that the power limit on this is so aggressive that overclocking is very strongly harmed because of it. And then also, um, once I flashed a custom BIOS to go around this power limit, one of the high side MOSFETs in this VRAM blew up. Um, this is probably not because I was overloading the VRAM, this is probably because the VRAM is using faulty components because after that it blew up two more times while not using uh, a BIOS that overloads the VRAM. So what I decided is I'm gonna nuke the entire VRAM or the MOSFETs of it and I'm gonna replace them with better ones to not only repair the card, but to also upgrade it so it has a better VRAM that can now handle higher power. So the hardware side of that problem has been solved. Every single MOSFET in that VRAM has been replaced um, by a, I don't remember the name, a Vichy Semiconductor R158 MOSFET, like I've, I've used these before. And that, include, that includes the high sides. Now that's a very bad idea. Why is that a bad idea? Because low side MOSFETs are designed to handle a lot of current and to have low RDS on. High side MOSFETs are designed to be fast so they can switch your 12 volts and yeah, so they can switch your 12 volts uh, very fast. Um, Using low side MOSFETs in the place of your high sides does make the VRM a lot worse because usually the low sides are slower than the high sides. And if you try to, to switch them as fast as a high side, you're gonna end up burning a lot of power and make the VRAM very inefficient. Now in this case, this issue is smaller because these, high, uh, these MOSFETs are pretty high end. So they are just very slightly worse than the high sides this came with. And I've also used two of them per phase, whereas the stock VRM only has one high side per phase. So that should help the efficiency a bit. Um, but yeah, every single MOSFET in that VRAM is the same one. And the data sheet says this is supposed to be a low side. So, uh, did it work? Kinda. So the card turns on. And like it's, it, it displays an image, it does run the driver, no problems at all until you actually try to do something. And I've said, I think I've said this before, the card did have this issue before I swapped out the VRM. The card runs and then just randomly shuts down. And, and, it, and it's not like it runs for half an hour and then shuts down because it gets too hot. No, like less than a minute, like 30 seconds and it just shuts down. And originally I was thinking because, uh, well, the high sides are probably overwhelmed because if one of them exploded, like it could be that it's just a faulty component. It could be a combination of being faulty and running too hot because the VRAM heatsink is not very good at being a VRAM heatsink. And the back of the card where the VRAM is around here gets so hot you can't touch it. So that's a lot more than 60 degrees on this side. So the internal MOSFET temperature is probably a lot higher. Um, so yeah, I was thinking that maybe it's tripping over, uh, over temperature protection on the VRM. So that's another reason why I have two high sides of these. Because like these MOSFETs should handle it, though they will be less efficient than some proper high sides. Well, as it turns out, that's not the issue. What's likely the issue is that something else is happening. 
I don't know what, but something else is happening. I have a theory that uh, while I was uh, like while I was messing with the hot air station with replacing all the MOSFETs, I may have overheated or broken something in the temperature sensing circuit because like these being discrete MOSFETs, they do not have an internal temperature sensor. So the VRM temperature reading has to come from something else. And usually that's a resistor that's somewhere where the VRAM is, and that resistor is being used as a temperature probe. Um, I don't quite remember where it is on this card. Uh, can I look for it? Wait, I'm gonna take a close look at the card, maybe I find it again. Uh, ah, yeah, there, under that inductor. There's a tiny resistor, and there's only one of it. So I suspect this is the temperature sensor. And yeah, basically, like uh, depending on heat, a resistor changes its resistance. And depending on what resistance it has, you can then calculate how hot it is. And maybe... I broke something in that circuit and the card is now thinking it's running way hotter than it actually is. Maybe it's just that these low sides are way more inefficient as high sides than I thought and it's really just getting very hot, though I've, I've been putting my finger on it and it's not really getting that hot. It's pretty cool actually. Um, yeah, the thing is just like, I don't know which is yeah i don't really know how to go on from here i don't want to e-power the card e-powering the card would get off the issue i would get rid of the issue but i don't want to e-power this i want to keep this capable of being used as a normal graphics card because like my originally i wanted to give this card to my sister to replace her gtx 780 but then the VRM blew up. So, yeah. I might just end up going to a local repair store and asking them what they think. But, uh... <coughs> oh, sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, I'm just not quite convinced that local repair shop is gonna have a better idea than I have. Because, like, they're probably gonna see, like, things like smartphones or laptops, usually not graphics cards that someone has messed with a lot. So, yeah, I don't know. The thing is, it's an AMD card. AMD cards are way too smart for their own good. Maybe it just knows I messed with it, and it just knows that something's wrong, and it just protects itself. But yeah, um... As it stands, this card does power on, but does not run anything. So, technically not working. And, well, one thing I could try is just replace the entire VRM again and just get new MOSFETs. Like, get, get the MOSFETs that this one had stock, get new ones of these, and just replace it again, and then just run the card stock and, and call it a day. Uh, but the thing is, if I put all those hours in, and also that money in, and it doesn't end up working, I'm gonna be super screwed. But, yeah. And I think uh, the, the reason why I'm kind of feeling a bit down right now is like this is not the only thing that didn't work out. Like I did a video before this about the 460 SE, how that one now has a shorted 12 volt power plane. And uh, like I did two of the, the both these in the same modding session and having both of these not work out is kind of a bummer. 
Like I'm not feeling that trade right now. But yeah. Um I did record some of this by the way, like swapping the MOSFETs. I did not record the end of it because I just forgot. But I did record the first part of this. Mm. I could I guess I, I I could just edit it in right now. Uh but yeah. Uh, the card is very much not working right now. And it's not like, oh yeah, the 460 has a short, um, because like the 460 was gonna get e-powered anyway, and this one cost me six bucks. This one cost me 150. And this is a card that is still perfectly usable. Like so it's an RX 570. It's yes, admittedly entry level, but for 1080p gaming, this is the perfectly serviceable card. While the 460 is basically usable for overclocking only. So I'm kind of upset by having this not work. And another note that I just uh, noticed why disassembling this thing. Um, you you see the yellow spots on these MOSFETs? Yeah, that that's a that's one more reason to hate this flux that I have, which I do have replaced by now. Like I have ordered some from a local store. Um, what claims to be Amtec flux, so the same uh, like the same Amtec flux that Louis Rossman uses. Um, there's a lot of fake ones out there, but like that store. I trust them to not buy it cheap off eBay. So yeah, I hope it's it's genuine because I couldn't get it from store.rosmangroup.com because shipping would be like three times the price of the tube. Um, but yeah, like another downside of the flux I have is it's super sticky and it almost destroyed this thermal pad right here. Um, so yeah. I finally want to get rid of that flux. It's so bad. Like it, it, it leaves residue everywhere. Like that stuff, that stuff, and like it's super sticky. It smells. You can't wash the residue off. It destroys thermal pads if you leave some on your MOSFETs, and it's just not great. I hope the MTEX stuff is gonna be better. Uh, oh, one thing I just noticed. That's interesting. Okay, on a completely other note. That thing right here, I never noticed the card has this. Um, is that an I2C connector? Like where I could connect an Elmo EVC? I don't have one of these, but they're only 20 bucks. I could get one of these. Like I could... If I get the VRAM repaired on this and can connect an Elmo EVC to this, that would be really great. Thing is just that VRAM is gonna be a huge limiting factor. Um, yeah. My 980 Ti Strix and my 780 Ti Matrix do have these as well though, I think. Uh, but yeah, ah, uh, whatever. I don't wanna stretch this video out too far again. Um, like I, I just filmed the other video trying to keep it short and it still ended up being 20 minutes again. So I'm gonna try to keep this shorter. So yeah, um, another not so great video from how I feel about this. Um, but I still hoped you enjoyed watching and until we see each other next time, goodbye.